Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the Baikar by Raktar Turkish drones. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now let's get right into it. Fact 1. 27 hours of endurance. The Turkish drone Baikar TB2 has a tremendous amount of endurance. It could fly up to 27 hours in the air without refueling. I think it's very incredible that the Turkish military contractors can produce a drone like this. With 27 hours of endurance, it could fly in the air for over a day and continuously through night and day doing the mission that it's set out to do. It's very incredible and this type of long endurance allows the drone to be very effective and versatile. Can you imagine how much time and how much missions it could conduct without having to come back and refuel multiple times? The high endurance of the drone is definitely one of its selling points. Alright, fact 2. Fully autonomous taxiing, takeoff, landing, and cruise. Another incredible fact about this TB2 drone is that it is almost fully automated. You could program the drone so that it knows where to taxi, where is the end of the runway, take off on the runway, and achieve a level flight and cruise to this destination, all without any operator input. And as I mentioned in the previous section, this drone is meant for long endurance. At 27 hours, you really can't have an operator always looking at the drone and monitoring the drone and operating the drone. No, you wanted to have as much automated features as possible so that the drone operator could pretty much set it and forget it. They could just program in the instructions for the drone, take off, fly where it needs to be, and remember, it could fly up to say 27 hours, so maybe the target is 20 hours away. You don't want the operator to sit there for 20 hours. You want the operator to be notified when the drone is in reach. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Triple redundant avionics systems. Another huge component and how it achieves that semi-fully automated autonomous flying is the fact that it has triple redundant avionic systems. There are triple set of systems for autopilot, sensoring, and operation of the aircraft. And so the operator, once they program in the destination, targets, and coordinates, and so forth, they don't really need to worry about it. They don't need to worry that if one GPS system goes down that the drone is completely lost. No, there's three redundant systems within this drone. In aviation, you always run redundant systems because if one fails, you're completely okay. You can continue to rely on your secondary backup systems. And in terms of the Baikar drone, you have three sets of systems. Therefore, if I was operating this drone, I am fully confident that once I set the coordinates and it starts flying there, it will probably get there without any issues. And I, as an operator, wouldn't need to continuously monitor the drone. I probably just want to come back when it's about to reach its destination and take the final action of launching the missiles and so forth, or even taking pictures with cameras and sensors. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact for 105 horsepower engine. I think one of the key points of why this Baikar TB2 drone can achieve such high endurance is because it doesn't use any powerful engines. If the drone was to use, say, a jet engine or a turboprop engine, it's not likely going to have that 27 hours endurance. And why is that? Well, simply put, a more powerful engine consumes more fuel. It's as simple as that. And jet engines are notorious for high level of fuel consumption and thereby a shorter range. By using a fairly small sized engine with very little power, it can achieve what it needs to do which is really to get to the destination and to stay in flight as long as it's possible. With a 105 horsepower engine, and frankly your cars these days have more horsepower than that, the engine is fairly small and therefore consumes very little fuel. This is what makes the Baikar drone pretty versatile and fuel efficient. Being fuel efficient is incredibly important because again, it could fly up to 27 hours in 
the air without refueling. And to achieve that, you cannot have too powerful of an engine, because to achieve that kind of power, it's going to consume more fuel. And so they've made the bike car drone with a small engine, and I think it's such a great idea because not only gets you high endurance, but it's easy to replace and cheap to maintain. All right, let's get into the next and final fact: web-based real-time transmission. Another very interesting part of the bike car drone. Is the fact that it sends over 30-minute increments of live video transmission back to its operator, and it does this through the internet. I believe it uses some kind of satellite internet because otherwise there's usually no internet connections far in remote distances. And so I believe they use satellite internet connections to transmit these images back to the operator. The Bicar Corporation also mentioned that the images. Because it's transferred through the internet, all you really need is an encrypted set of user and password credentials to access it. And so, one of the capabilities that the Bicar website says is that the drone, once it beams back the live images, anyone with the right access and credentials can simply log on to a computer, access the internet, and access the footage right away. I think it's very incredible that a military drone of this class. Is using the internet technologies similar to what you will find in a webcam or a security camera. By leveraging the power of internet, it makes it so much easier for operators and other people of interest to view the camera footages that's coming back from the field. All right, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.